Okay, let's kick off the year right with uh, looking at uh, some ancient stuff. Let's look at the ancient boundary stele that they used to have in ancient Egypt uh, to set forth boundaries and borders in places and stuff. And what they said, they were going to look at the uh, Semna stele of Sinusheret the uh, Third. It's a stele from the year eight of his reign. It says the southern boundary made in the year eight under the majesty of the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Kekur who has given life forever and ever in order to prevent that any Negro should cross it by water or by land with our ship or any herds of the Negroes, except a Negro who shall come to do trading in Iken or with a commission. Every good thing shall be done with them, but without allowing a ship of the Negroes to pass He going downstream forever. Now this is leading up into the uh, area of uh, what we call uh, nowadays uh, Semna but in that day they called it Ican or actually there was a trading post set up just in front of there which was Ican now uh, Kekur is actually what we know as Kekare and that his kingly name is Sinistret the third uh, they described that the uh, Lichtheim said that the Negroes are talking about of course are the Nubians that's the only black people that are there at the time Although there is a difference between Nubian A and Nubian B that shows up later, and Nubian C and stuff that they show up later, it's a, they can genetically tell a difference between the people. Uh, so it, and there was a large difference between the first time they ran into them and the second time. It was almost a 600-year period before there's anything written about them. And then we go into the um, first intermediary period, having a lot of trouble, and then coming out of that into these periods that are here. Now, He is known as Simna. The identification of ancient He with modern Simna rests on the first fact that the two of the three boundaries, nearly all of which uh, name He as the boundary, uh, were found at Simna, and the third just north of Simna at Uranarti. So, and that odd name there with the Ur in the front of it, it's a strange name. Uh, people that look at linguistics, too, tell you that this is not a normal Egyptian type name. But uh, if we look at the map over here, I don't know if we can quite get it in so far at the edge. But when we're looking right there, you can kind of see Simna is right in here. Just past the second cataract and past what they call Wawat. And uh, although He leads all the way up into what would basically be right in here. Right at that boundary. And, I, and Kush is right below that. Uh, leading past the third boundary. So uh, let's go on here and looking at the stele from year 16. Live the king of upper and lower Egypt, Sesostris III, who is given life, stability, and satisfaction forever. Year 16, the third month of the second season, occurred his majesty making the southern boundary as far as Ha, having made my boundary beyond that of my father's. I have increased that which was bequeathed to me. I am king who speaks and executes. That which my heart conceives is that which comes to pass by my hand. One who is eager to possess and powerful to missing word called Lycuna. Not allowing a matter to sleep in his heart. Attacking him who attacks. Silent in a matter are answering a matter according to that which is in it. Since if one is silent after attack, it strengthens the heart of the enemy. Valiance is eagerness. Cowardice is to slink back. He is truly craven who is repelled upon his border. Since the Negro hearkens to the call of the mouth, it is answering him which drives him back when one is eager against him he turns his back when one slinks back he begins to be eager so if you back away he starts to try to attack again but they are not a people of might they are a poor and broken in heart my majesty has seen them it is not an untruth now looking here this is a uh, people of might looking at these this would be uh well, well real quick we'll look at the uh stele here and you can see the, this is the drawing of it, the full drawing of it, I guess.
Now that's the full titulary tablet that's right there. Um, and they say that year 16, third month of the second season, the Julian date or our calendar would have been at the end of May in uh, circa 1862 BC before the Common Era. My boundary beyond that of my father's, it talks about, the Egyptian incursions into Nubia began in the Old Kingdom, generally in the guise of retaliatory raids or trading expeditions, one or the other. Sinjusaret I conquered Lower Nubia. Sinjusaret III built fortifications along the Nile to a second cataract, and it became the subjugation of Nubia. Uh, also, when it talks about hearkens to the word of the mouth, they say, listen to the word of the mouth or the call of the uh, mouth. And also, whenever they talk about people of might, it says people one respects. So, um, so actually saying they're not a people that one respects. They are poor and broken in heart. I capture their women. I carried off their subject. Went forth to their wells. Smote their bulls. I reaped their grain and set fire thereto. I swear, as my father lives for me, I speak in truth without a lie therein coming out of my mouth. Now as for every son of mine who shall maintain this boundary, which his majesty has made, he is my son, he is born to my majesty, the likeness of a son who is the champion of his father, who maintains the boundary of him who begot him, now as, far, as for him who shall relax it and shall not fight for it, he is not born to me. Now behold, my majesty caused a statue of my majesty to be made upon this boundary which my majesty made in order that ye might prosper because of it, in order that ye might fight for it. And then the next is the subjugation of Nubia. Um, when are they talk about reaping the fields and grain, it basically just means to cut them down, set firing and stuff. They say, well, um, like others before and after him, pursued a policy of scorched earth. Just how complete destruction was was unclear, but it seems to have been mostly unsuccessful. Then again, quite often it is you burn a land and then it'll grow right back up again off of it. So uh, psh, uh, rain or two and Egypt grows like crazy. Pacification of Nubia occurred when the local elite became Egyptianized. And that happened shortly after this point. Uh, when they talk about shall relax it, uh, the like time says it means to abandon it. So he's telling you that uh, now as for him who shall abandon the idea of the border, um, that he's not their son. He's not born to them. So it's just one of the sets of steles and the boundaries here that uh, are from ancient Egypt that uh, set forth a boundary. And it tells you that they really didn't let the Nubians into Egypt. Uh, people think that they're all lollygagging around all over and into the Levant even perhaps and up into Libya. But there are other stelae that says that they are, um, there's a bounty on their heads, which is really their right hand. If they get their right hand, which is what probably holds the weapon, very few left-handers, um, then you can prove that you killed one and stuff. There are ancient depictions of this and there are depictions of them taking hands by the basket full and throwing them into a pit and so on and counting them and things like this uh, but you know they were worth more uh, dead than they were alive actually they did not want them as slaves and everybody says oh they were slaves to them and stuff really not much they really weren't allowed in there were some that were subjugated and uh, they were kind of domesticated and then put back into their population to try to subjugate the people a little better. Eventually they ended up just having to put a governing area up over Moreau, which is just a little farther down the Nile past the bend that you see there. And uh, so they had a governing area that's over Moreau and then much later uh, once the Persians took over, um, after the Nubians caused an attack uh, in the late 25th dynasty, uh, which lasted for like 70 years and then the Akkadians took them back over uh, and or the Assyrians took them back over and whenever they did, they uh, put a Neko back in place. And of course, from then on, they were really just a puppet regime. And never Egypt never recovered, act, actually, after the Nubian advance. Um, they, they held on pretty well. And there were others that uh, it seemed like the other people that came and took over, they tried to up and keep it up and going rather than just going to screw that place from everything that had happened. It definitely wasn't. Uh, even uh, it's well known that uh, Alexander the Great was heralded in as a a savior, taking him away from some of the troubles that had happened through the Persian reign. 
but the Persians in a Cambysius, um, they set up Moreau uh, or did a secondary build into Moreau. In fact, Moreau is actually named for his sister. So some interesting facts there and stuff. Uh, an interesting weird thing too here is that they put Kekur and they did not put the name of the king on there at the time, which was a little bit odd for them to have done, but not too odd. They've seen it in a few other places. Uh, some of these elder steles and stuff have a tradition to them that's different than the later steles that they have. And uh, there's a few more that say the same thing too that seem to be over on the uh, boundary towards Libya and into uh, the Levant. And so it lets people know in co to and from. And of course, this is supposed to tell the Negroes not to come through. The problem, I guess, entailed with that is that none of them were literate pretty much. So how would they know? Well, they were told, I guess, but they didn't stay to it too good. If we go through the lineage here, it doesn't take too much longer before they end up having another conflict. And they keep having this conflict. Rather than the Negroes seeing this as an example of what to build and then going and building it somewhere else, they kept coming to the border of Egypt. Um, kind of like in, in you know South Africa and stuff where they kept coming to the border. People that actually migrated down, most of those people are Bantus and didn't even live in the area. The Khoisan were the ones that were in the area at the time, but once the Bantus came down, they got pretty much run out of the area and killed off. That's another whole story, though. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. Again, the boundaries, Stimne Stila of Sinjret III. Peace.